of you guys knew that today was Captain America Day? It is, I posted it, it is fantastic. So right now you should be sitting in the general, I love this, you're sitting in the general vicinity of your group. So I need one person, probably one of your leaders, to come up and get a sheet of paper from me. Come on up, one person from your group. Because tonight, in honor of Captain America Day, we are taking a Captain America Day quiz. Now, there should be a pen at your table. Uh, if, if you're not at a table, then you can uh, grab one from the back table there. Now, you're just going to you're going to see on the sheet of paper just a bunch of numbers. So you're going to see the number in A, B, C, or D. I'm going to be reading off a question. And your job as a team is to try and figure out which one it is, A, B, C, yeah, or D. So don't be really loud as a team uh, because you don't want to let tip anybody else off. Your goal is to get as many right as possible. Becca, can I get some uh, some thematic uh, Avengers uh, music playing here? I want to hear some of the hammering of Iron Man's armor. Yeah, you start feeling it? I those two chairs. All right, Sam, I think Levi has your paper words, Levi. There he is, all right? All right, here we go with question number one. What year did Captain America first appear in comics? Was it A, 1939, B, 1941, C, 1943, or D, 1945? So what year did Captain America first appear in comics? 39, 41, 43, 45, circle one, and here we go to question number two. Who is this longtime partner of Captain America? Is it A, Falcon, B, D-Man, C, the Winged Avenger, or D, Moda? Who is this longtime partner of Captain America? A, Falcon, B, D-Man, C, the Winged Avenger, or D, Moda? Is it A, the Human Skull, B, the Red Skull, C, No Face, or D, the Scarlet Mask? What is the name of this villain? The Human Skull, B, the Red Skull, C, No Face, or D, the Scarlet Mask? I Deadpool. It's not Deadpool. All right, number four. What was Sharon Carter's agent number? Was it A, 9, B, 11, C, 13, or D, so was she Agent 9, Agent 11, Agent 13, or Agent 2? No, you're Captain America for Captain America Day. Here we go with number 5. Who created Captain America? Was it A, Stan Lee and Steve Ditko? Was it B, Bob Saget and Danny Tanner? Was it C, Tobias Boone and Noob Saboth? Or was it D, Jack Kirby and Joe Simon? Who created Captain America? Was it Stanley, Steve Ditko, Bob Saget, Danny Tanner, C, Tobias Boone, or Noob Saibot? Or D, Jack Kirby, Joe Simon? All right, number six is true or false. Captain America's shield has always been around. True or false? Could it have been square? Could it have been trapezoid? True or false, Captain America Shield has always been around. Number seven, here we go. Captain America was played in the movies by which Chris? Was it A. Hemsworth, B. Evans, C. Pine, or D. Pratt? Captain America was played in the movies by which Chris? Chris Hemsworth, A. B. Evans, C. Pine, or D. Pratt? Is it A, Batrock the Leaper, B, Batrock the Jumper, C, Batrock the Kicker, or D, Batrock the Breaker? Who is this villain? Is it A, Batrock the Leaper, Batrock the Jumper, C, Batrock the Kicker, or D, Batrock the Breaker? All right, two more left. Who, number nine, who is his longtime friend of Captain America? Is it A, Johnny, B, Chappie, C, The Kid, or D, Bucky. Bucky. Who is this longtime friend? 
front of Captain America? Is it A, Johnny, B, Chappie, C, The Kid, or D, Bucky? Our final one, number 10, here we go. Who is Captain America seen punching in the face on the classic first issue for 1941? Is it A, The Pope, B, Jesus, C, Hitler, or D, Mussolini? Who is Captain America seen punching in the face in the classic issue number one from 1941? The Pope, Jesus, Hitler, or Mussolini? The Pope. <laughs> All right, no more changing your answers. No more changing. Here we go. Let's go back to the top and let's get our answers. So what year did Captain America first appear in the comics? B. B, 1941. B, 1941. So if you got it right, you know what to do. Number two, who was this long-time partner of Captain America? It is the Falcon. Hey, good job. Number three, what is the name of this villain? It is the Red Skull. Number letter B. All right, number four, what was Sharon Carter's agent number? Thirteen. Agent thirteen. Captain America. Stanley. Five <laughs> It was D. Jack Kirby and Joe Simon. I tricked you on that one. And good job on Bob Saga, Danny Tanner. Number six. Captain America's shield has always been round. True or false? False. Correct. It was once triangle in shape, like a kite shape. All right. Number seven. Captain America was played in the movies by which Chris? Chris Evans. Chris Evans is correct. Letter B. All right. Number eight. Who is this villain of Captain America? It is A. That's Rock the Leaper. Number nine. God spoke to him in such a way that he had to share what was on his heart. And tonight he's going to be sharing with us uh, how we reach out to the lost, those people that are different than us. And, and once again, it's tied back into Captain America. If you know anything about his character over the course of the last 70 years, is that he doesn't look at the outward appearance of somebody. He always looks at that inward character. And uh, I would hope that we would maybe here in this time, that this is a time when we want to see people for who they are on the inside, not based off of what they look like on the outside. So I'm going to pray for us and invite Stacey up. So God, thank you for this time. Thank you for each person that's here. God, we ask that you speak to us in this time. God, thank you for Stacy and thank you for his willingness to share his heart. God bless the time in your name. We pray. Amen. Let's give him a round of applause for the God of Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so I am going to talk to you about um, the kind of the state of global missions and um, the unreached peoples of the world. So this is an important topic. I am going to throw out a lot of statistics, so it might seem a little bit um, dry, but it, they're really important. And so just kind of pay attention to the statistics um, of the unreached peoples of the world. Okay, so. Our worldwide population, the, the global population of the world right now is a, uh, roughly 7.53 billion. Um, our, the median age um, of the people in the world is 29.7. And 
and the life expectancy is 68 years old, which I thought was interesting because the Bible says uh, in Psalm 90 that the age of a person would be 70 years. So I think that's, uh, it, it verifies the Bible. Uh, the top five most populous countries are China, uh, India, US, Indonesia, and Brazil. Uh, people groups. So going back to last week when I talked to you guys about um, the scripture where Jesus um, says that the gospel would be preached to all the nations of the world and then the end would, uh, and then he would return. Um, the word in the Greek there is ethnos, which is ethnic people groups. And so um, there's been some um, really amazing Christians in the world that have have done a lot of research, and these all these inform all this information is available freely on the internet. Um, but worldwide, there's a total people groups. There's 16,591 um, unreached people groups. So that would be less than two percent evangelical Christian. There's still 6,741 unreached people groups. Unevangelized, which would be greater than 2% evangelical, but still have great numbers of unsaved, would be 2,792. Um, and reached people groups would be greater than 2% evangelical or majority Christian population. Um, there's over 7,000. So the 1040 window, um, most of the world's unreached people, so 97% of the world's unreached people, are located geographically um, in what some people call the 1040 window, which is from West Africa uh, across Asia, and then between 10 degrees latitude north and 40 degrees latitude north, which I'm going to show you a map in just a second so you'll be able to see it visually. Um, but that's what the 1040 window is. People in missions talk about the 1040 window a lot because the majority of the unreached peoples in the world are in that window. The total population within that window is 4.89 billion. Um, total people groups is 8,200, and the total unreached people groups is 5,600. So this is a very, um, well here I'll show you the map because it really explains it better. So this is a map of the world, obviously. Um, and all the red is unreached people groups. And as you can see that that square or that rectangle is, is the 1040 window. And um, clearly that's all across North Africa and through India, Middle East, all that area. And so why? Why is that? Why is that? Why is there more unreached people groups in those areas? Well, because it's hard. <laughs> that's why. It's the most difficult areas to get into. It's the most difficult peoples to reach with the gospel. But that means that we just need to get busy, right? We need to get busy as Christians and we need to get into these areas and we need to reach these people. There are people in the world, there are unreached people groups. Um, and I'm gonna talk in just a minute too about frontier people groups. That's even, um, that's even less Christians actually. They're in frontier people groups, there's no Christians at all. There are still frontier groups on this world that have zero Christians. So those people, there's people in this world that could live their entire lives and never even meet a Christian. That's pretty sad. So Christians of the world. <clears throat> so all Christians, there are about 2.2 billion of us. Um, that would include the Catholics, Protestants, everybody that would uh, identify themselves as a Christian um, within 6,800 people groups. Evangelicals, so of evangelical Christians, there are 550 million of us. So um, according to that number, there are 900 churches for every one unreached people group. And there are 78,000 evangelical Christians on the earth for every one unreached people group. So this shouldn't be such a big problem on the world. For how many evangelical Christians there are, we should, we should easily be able to reach this goal of the um, fulfilling the Great Commission. So money and missions, this is another big thing. So what do Christians earn? So the annual income of all church members 
um, of all churches in the world is $42 trillion. Annual income of evangelical Christians is approximately $7 trillion. So what do we give? So give to, given to any Christian cause is about $700 billion. That's also how much we spend on Christmas in the United States. And given to missions is $45 billion, which is also how much we spend on dieting programs in the United States. So how, how is um, Christian giving used? So most of it, 96.8% uh, of it goes to pastoral ministries of local churches. And most of them are already in Christian nations. So like this right here, like our church. Um, the next biggest one is 2.9% of that money goes to home missions, which would be like um, the trips we take within the United States or you know, within a, a nation that's already reached with the gospel. Going to unevangelized non-Christian world is 2.1 billion, which is 0.3%. And the money that goes towards unreached peoples is only about 450 million. Um, and to put that into perspective, 450 million that goes to unreached peoples is only about 0.001% of the $42 trillion income of Christians. So for every $100,000 that Christians make, they give a dollar to the unreached. That's pretty sad, sad, if you ask me. So observations from our uh, giving. So evangelical Christians could provide all the funds needed to plant a church in each of the 6,900 unreached people groups with only 0.03% of their income. The church has roughly 3,000 times the financial resources and 9,000 times the manpower needed to finish the Great Commission. If we would just get busy and do what the Lord told us to do. If every evangelical gave 10% of their income to missions, we could easily support another 2 million missionaries going out into the world. Can you imagine two million missionaries? We would finish the Great Commission like that. I mean, we could finish it in a year. So, missionaries of the world. All missionaries in the world, so that's Catholic, Protestant, everybody. Anybody that's going. Um, there's about 400,000. Uh, missionaries to the reach the world is about 77.3% of that. Missionary, missionaries to unevangelized is about 19.4% and missionaries to the unreached is only about 3.3%. Uh, 30 to 1, so roughly 30 times as many missionaries go to reached people groups to work with other Christians as go to unreached people groups. Far less than that even go to the frontier groups that have no Christians. The ratio of unreached people group workers to the total unreached world is un one missionary for every 216,300 unreached people. So is God to blame for not calling people to missions? If everyone is obeying God's calling to be a missionary wherever they are, then God is calling 99.9995% of people to work among the 44.3% of the world population that already has the gospel, and he's calling virtually no one, 0.0005%, to relocate among the other 55.7% of the world population that are not Christian. So I don't think this has to do with God not calling people to missions. I just don't think people are listening. In light of God's word, this seems unfathomable, and it appears to be almost complete disobedience on the part of the church worldwide to go make disciples of all nations. Financially, we are hoarding 99.9% of our income to ourselves, and what little is given is mostly directed towards people that are already reached. So what does this all mean? Well, it means that we're failing pretty miserably at the one thing that God commanded us to do, 
Before he went up to heaven, he said, Go and make disciples of all nations, all people groups, and baptize them in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> so, now I have some memes for you. Your purpose on earth is to tell people about Jesus. And that's the most important thing you will ever do in your lives. It's absolutely the most important thing you will ever do. And he did, God did not put us here on this earth. God did not put us here in the United States of America so that we could have a nice life, so that we could have a good car and a, and a nice home and a beautiful wife and two kids and the American dream you guys is a lie that's not why we're here that's the prosperity gospel and that's not in the Bible anywhere we're to spread the gospel we're to share the good news about Jesus Christ that's why we're here that's our purpose that's why God saved us so that we can tell others I have a, I have a short little story from this book this book is called Unto Death, Martyrdom, Missions, and the Maturity of the Church. Um, the guy that wrote this, his name is Felton Thomas, and if anybody's interested in this book, it's excellent. Uh, I would highly recommend reading it, um, but there's a little short story in here I want to read, share with you guys. He says, that, <laughs> he says the fact that we in the West are so unconcerned about the unreached and unengaged is an injustice of epic proportions. <clears throat> Still, after 2,000 years, half of the Earth's population has never met an ambassador of Christ. In the book, The Spiritual Secret of Hudson Taylor, so um, Hudson Taylor was a missionary to the interior of China. He was the first one to ever go. He, he was a missionary there in the 1800s, and he went to the interior of China, and he reached Chinese people with the gospel of Christ, and he was the first one to ever, to ever go into some of these people groups. So in the book, The Spiritual Secret of Hudson Taylor, the son and daughter-in-law of the frontier missionary recall the story of an interaction between Taylor and a new and deeply grateful Chinese convert. The new believer confronted him and unexpectedly raised the question, how long have you had the good tidings in your country? Some hundreds of years was the reluctant reply from Taylor. What? Hundreds of years? My father sought the truth, he continued sadly, and died without finding it. Oh, why did you not come sooner? It was a moment, the pain of which Hudson Taylor could never forget, and which deepened his earnestness in seeking to bring Christ to those who might still be reached. That's, that's a powerful thing. I mean, we need to think about the people that haven't heard. That's the most important thing, you guys, that we will ever do in our lives. So my challenge to you, to get back to that, I challenge each one of you, tonight, tomorrow, sometime, to just give your lives fully to Jesus. When you're praying tonight on your bed, or sometime, just tell him, Lord, I give you my life. I give you my life, and just use me, Lord. Use me however you see fit. The, the Lord has a better plan for your life than you ever will. 
Give your life fully into his hands and let him use you how he wants to. Tell him that you're willing to go anywhere that he wants you to. And just say, Lord, send me wherever you want to. I'm willing to go. That's my challenge to you. Let him spend your life how he sees fit. It's the most important thing you'll ever do. So, one last thing real quick. Sorry, Rob. Um, if you think that this task is daunting, if you think that this task is just, like, how can we even scratch the surface of this? I mean, it seems to be such a giant task, such a giant problem that all these unreached are all over the place. Um, I just wanted to share this real quick with you. Um, this is... Um, there's a method, there's a kind of, I don't know, it's not really new, it's kind of been a rediscovered method of, of making disciples. That's called DMM, it's um, the Disciple Making Movements. Um, and this is just one organization, this, this organization is called newgenerations.org, but they're using this method in uh, Africa and India, I believe, and in just one year, look at this number, it's just crazy. In one year, from October 2019 to September 2020, God used the DMM process through this organization to plant 8,800 new churches with almost 160,000 new believers in Christ. That's awesome. God is using this, and I believe that this method is going to finish the Great Commission. It's just absolutely... this. This method is burning across these places like wildfire. And it, it's awesome what God is doing in some of these places. But we need to get busy. We need to get busy and we need to take it seriously. That's all I have. Thank you, Stacy. Um, I just want to say if you're feeling something inside, um, if you're maybe feeling angry about what you just heard or you're feeling like, why can't we do more? Um, as I said earlier, that's the conviction of the Holy Spirit. Maybe you're just wondering why, why nothing else is happening. Why are people groups not being reached? What can I do? If you're feeling that on the inside, talk with your group about that tonight. Just share your uncomfortableness with it. And just talk about that conviction. Because one of the last questions that Stacy has on um, your discussion questions for tonight is for you to brainstorm as a group ways that we can reach uh, the least, the ways that we can reach uh, the unreached. And you may be thinking that's impossible. We can't just up and go to the 10 port. We can't just go to uh, East Asia or, or Northern Africa. But what can we do? Brainstorm. You know what it might be? We start taking a weekly offering. It might be we practice how we, how we share Jesus Christ with others. There are things we can do right now, and I want to hear your thoughts. And I want to encourage you guys to, when you get to that question, share some good ideas or just whatever ideas, because there's always something we can do. And I would love to then hear from you leaders. Uh, text me later tonight if you, if you guys got any suggestions, because Stacey's right. We need to start doing something, and we can do something. So find your, you guys are with your small groups, that's awesome if you want to spread out, if you want to go downstairs or into another spot. Get together with your small groups. Um, just a quick, quick reminder, uh, if you're not on the app, get on the app. You get all the information for the Mission Impossible that's coming up, not this Saturday night, but the next Saturday night is on there. It's going to be an incredible night for, for you and your, your family to go on an adventure together. If your family doesn't come here, uh, connect with one of, uh, one of the parents or somebody else that is here, and they'd probably love to form a team with you, but it's going to be a blast. So make sure you download the app, Check that out. It's called Mission Impossible. Some good stuff coming up. So find your leader. Go off. Ready, set, go.